Good day. My name is Randy Willeman. I am the Director of Ohio Operations for Command Alcon. In this presentation, I will present the basics of Command Batch Precision Water System. With this information, you should be able to easily and quickly calibrate your Model 7100 moisture probe and also be able to verify the calibration on an ongoing basis. Starting the Command Batch application is easy. You can either open it from the main select form dialog box here or if you have a folder on the command batch sidebar you can click there and open the PWS application right there. In order for the precision water system to work properly it is important to configure the material parameters for the bins that have the moisture probes in them. In this particular case the system is configured with three moisture probes. To access the parameters click on the probe details buttons. When you click on that button, the probe material assignment screen will open. The first thing to check is the capture settings, right here. These govern the timing of how the probe gathers the readings. Capture delay is the amount of time the system waits after the gate opens for the material to start moving. The duration is the length of time the system gathers readings from the probe when the material is feeding. The capture delay is usually about one second. The duration can be from 3 to 5 seconds depending on how fast the material comes through the gate. You want to be careful not to set the duration too short or too long. If it is too short, the system won't get an accurate measurement of the material moisture. And if it's longer than the time the gate is open, the PWS will discard the readings. Note that these settings can be different for each probe. The Material Details button is the final configuration screen needed for this probe setup. Within this screen, there are several specific properties that are defined which are needed by the Precision Water System. When you click on this button, the screen will automatically open and have the focus on the material that we are working on. The key parameters include absorption percent, which of course comes from the QC department in your company. The checkbox relates to the information in the video Moisture Distribution in a Stockpile. If you've not seen this, you can find this on the Command Alcon website. The default value is not checked, so we will leave it as such. The min moisture percent and the max moisture percent are critical parameters that allow the precision water system to guide the moisture probe process. These values should be set to the worst case range of moisture that is experienced over a year. Of course, this will vary from region to region, but for this example, a minimum value of 2% and a maximum value of 12% will be used. Once the min moisture percent and the max moisture percent values are entered, the PWS will automatically calculate the usable range of samples for the calibration process. The PWS calibration white paper, available on the Command Alcon website, can provide the background for this value. There is also an override checkbox to enter in a manual value. However, this should not be necessary. With the parameters for this bin completed, return to the main PWS screen. The main screen provides access to the other functions in the PWS system. As moisture samples are gathered, the list of captured readings will grow. If you are starting with a new system, there will be system points that were created automatically when the probe was assigned to the material. These points provide a baseline of values that will be replaced as actual breakout results are added to the system. When the system is first configured, a default calibration was entered. These values will show in the current calibration area of the screen. The slope value basically represents how sensitive the probe is to changes in the material moisture, while the y-intercept value compensates for the absorption in the material and also for manufacturing variances in the moisture probe itself. As bakeouts are added to the system, the proposed calibration numbers will change. When there are enough bakeout entries to warrant a change to the calibration, the Accept Calibration button is pressed. Before any new calibration can be accepted, some bakeout entries need to be entered. This system has been updated to reflect three bakeouts from the plan. The PWS has an easy to use sample capture mechanism built in. If you are not familiar with it, refer to the Operator's Guide or call Command Alcon Support. All the Operator Guides are available by clicking on the Manuals item 
on the command batch toolbar. With the three bakeout points added to the system, we can see that the proposed calibration has been updated. In order to understand what that means, click the Diagnostic Graph button. The Diagnostic Graph shows the system generated points, as well as the acceptable tolerance range based on the min moisture and the max moisture parameters entered in the Material Details screen. I will move these forms side by side so we can see the interaction between them. Now let's imagine we are just getting the PWS system set up and we've added these three bakeout entries on the main screen. These points will now also show up on the active calibration screen here. Since two of the points fall below the current calibration line, the blue one, and one is slightly above the current calibration line, when the system does the math it has proposed a new calibration line and it is showing this as the purple line. That purple line represents the number shown here on the main screen. What do the proposed calibration numbers and its associated purple line mean? What will happen if I accept the calibration? If we look at the two types of numbers, slope and y-intercept, we can figure it out. First, as said earlier, the slope represents the sensitivity of the probe to moisture. For different types of materials, the slope will change. 0.34 is a good number for most sands, while there are smaller slope numbers entered for coarse aggregates. But for now we will stick with the sand number. The proposed calibration and current calibration numbers are really close to each other. To accept the proposed calibration won't change the sensitivity of the probe at all. Let's turn our attention then to the y-intercept numbers. Think of the y-intercept as basically a knob, like a tuning dial on a radio that adjusts the probe output to set 0% moisture, or SSD. SSD means that the outside of the particle is dry, while the inside is completely saturated. However, the moisture probe can't tell the difference between water that is outside of the particle of sand from the water that is inside the particle. It just senses water. Therefore, 0% moisture, or SSD, is going to be a different amount of absorbed water for different materials. The y-intercept, then, is the value we use to adjust the probe output so that zero equals zero moisture. We can see from the numbers that the y-intercept is currently minus 3.88 and the PWS is proposing a new number of minus 4.428. That is roughly one half of a percent different and is more negative. What this means, then, is that if I accept the proposed calibration, all the readings from the probe, from low moisture to high moisture, will be about half a percent smaller than it is now. So the entire output of the probe is shifted down a little over one half of a percent. So what was reported as four percent is now three and a half percent, and what was six percent is now five and a half. Given that one half percent change is not insignificant, it makes sense to accept the calibration even though we only have a handful of points so far. To do that, press the Accept Calibration button. Once it is completed, the Active Calibration graph is updated as well. The next step will be to acquire more bakeouts. For the purposes of this demonstration, I will add another 10 bakeout samples to this calibration. The Active Calibration now shows the additional 10 samples. We now have a total of 18 samples available, with 16 of them defined as in range. This means those 16 points are within the usable range as defined by the top to bottom spread of the moisture in the stockpile. At the middle of the graph, notice this 30 count line. I have three points practically resting on this line. One shows a bakeout result of 3.93% while the other result was 7.74%. In both cases, the probe thought the average moisture was about 5.5% because that is what the calibration line suggests it should be. As long as the bakeouts fall between the two in-range lines, they are okay for use with the calibration. One might ask the question, how can that be? 
How can a probe think the moisture is only 5.5% when one of the bakeouts was all the way up at 7.74%? Well, just to review, remember that the stockpile was tested and we specified that it has 2% material at the top and 12% material at the bottom. The 5.5% of the PWS represents the average of the entire feed cycle. The 7.74% is the result of the sample from the gate. And because that, that sample is so small relative to the total batch, it may have been we just happened to capture a wet sample. This is why it takes a number of samples of material from a stockpile to get a good calibration. Now, if you have a stockpile that only has a spread of, say, 5% moisture from top to bottom, then you can expect these variances to be smaller. In that case, go back to the material setup screen shown in slide 5 and enter in a new top and bottom range. The system will help decide whether or not the probe has a good calibration. Based on computer models used by Command Alcon, it has been determined that if 95% or more of the points are within the in-range lines, then the probe is calibrated. This calibration reports that 88% of the bakeouts are in range. That's still very good, but it may be possible to raise that number. Notice we have a couple of points just below the bottom edge. Using the new feature, the shift slider, all of the points can be scooted up or down to see if we can improve the percentage. As I can demonstrate, if I pull the slider down, all the points are pulled down and the in-range percentage drops to 77% from the original 88%. If I move the slider up a little bit, the percentage increases to 94% and then to 100%. This is a quick way to adjust the calibration without having to go back to the Accept Calibration button on the main screen. Once I am satisfied with the in-range percentage, I press the Save button and I am finished. This version of Precision Water System has some additional settings that help manage the bake-out data. At the bottom of the screen are three new fields. The first field is a checkbox labeled Override Buckets. If we enable this checkbox, several things happen. That is, the number of data buckets and the number of data points fields will become active. There will also be some orange lines that appear as part of the grid on the active calibration screen. The reason for this new feature is demonstrated by this graph. Previous versions of the Precision Water System would allow dozens and dozens of bakeout results to be entered in the system without any management. As a result, the screens would often appear like this, where there is a dense concentration of points at one end or the other of the line. This caused several problems. First, it simply became hard to read the graph. Second, with all those points concentrated in one spot, if new bakeouts were added, they really wouldn't have any effect because there were so many old points that overrode the new points. Another problem was that bakeout points were always deleted after a certain period of time, regardless of their position on the graph. Bakeouts that were entered during the summer would be deleted after 180 days and were lost. Likewise, bakeouts entered in the winter would be purged in the spring. Given, on average, that materials are wetter at one time of the year and drier at the other, the PWS would mistakenly discard valuable calibration information. The new data bucket feature addresses both of these issues. First, no matter how many bakeout samples are entered into the system, it will never allow more bakeouts to be saved in a bucket than the number of data points is set to. To begin, I'll enable the override buckets checkbox. These orange lines frame the individual buckets. Given that the number of data buckets is set to 10, and the number of data points set to 4, the maximum number of data points the system will use will be 40. However, in this case, there isn't data in each of the 10 buckets, so there is some number less than that displayed. To show more data points, move the number of data points slider up to 10. The system will automatically pick the 10 most recent bakeouts in each bucket for display. 10 is a recommended setting for the system. With the number of data points setting at 10, 
you can see the in range is 87 percent. You can eliminate points outside of the line by double clicking on them. The double click action will either disable or enable a fake out. I will remove several points now. By eliminating those bakeout points, the in range number is now 100%. With the in range number now over 95%, I can press the save button and save this calibration. Just a small note here, when the precision water system is installed, the override buckets checkbox is turned off by default. This prevents the existing calibration for any probe from changing when an older version of command batch is updated to this new version. However, use of the data buckets is an important new feature with the system and should always be turned on after the update is completed. There are just a few more remaining functions to explain. First, you can see any unused bakeouts by clicking the display unused points on the main screen. This shows all of the redundant bakeouts that the system has cleaned up for you. If you wish to add these points into the calibration, you can simply double click on them. The PWS has a built-in magnifier that can be used to zoom in on a particular area. You press and hold the mouse and form a square around the area that you wish to magnify and then release. This makes turning the bakeouts off and on much easier. When you are done, unclick and click the Use Standard Scale checkbox to return to the normal view. The last remaining decision is when to turn off the system points. When the precision water system was initially installed, default values were entered to provide a base calibration. Once there are 15 to 20 points from bakeout samples, these points can be disabled. To disable the system points, click the Probe Details button. Once there, unclick the Use System Points checkbox. Save and close. This will remove the system points for this material bin combination. With the system points disabled, press the Accept Calibration. From this point, you can continue to sample on a regular basis and enter in data. The PWS will automatically disable the oldest point in the bucket whenever a new point is added to that bucket. This keeps the screen from getting too cluttered and provides that new bakeouts have an impact sooner rather than later. As bakeouts are added to the system, the goal is to keep the in-range number at or above 95%. If the in-range number falls below 95%, then it is time to make a new calibration for the probe using the techniques explained in this presentation. Once a probe is calibrated, it should not need recalibration unless something changes, such as the material gradation or a probe is replaced. If you perform a bakeout on a regular basis, whether that is daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly, as long as the in-range result stays around 95%, the probe is working properly. Thank you very much for your attention to this presentation. If you have questions, please contact the Command Outcome Service Department, or I can be contacted at rwilliman.com.